Welcome back with Astra. We're here today talking about the recovery system, which is going to be what brings our vehicle back to the ground. Of course, as you may know, we're trying to get to the carbon line with our rocket that we're developing, and that's reaching an altitude of over 100 kilometers. So it's quite a challenge to bring all of that back to the ground. Today, we have here Arvid Zankel, who's going to tell us a little bit about how the recovery system works um, and the special engineering things that are going into constructing the recovery system. Yeah, glad that I can be, um, uh, will actually be um, interviewed here a little bit and um, have a bunch of different uh, interesting things maybe to share a little bit and um, uh, will we have to answer some questions. Okay, maybe uh, to start, just tell us a little bit about your background mm -hmm. and how you came to engineering and working on the recovery system of the Astro vehicle. Okay, yes. Um, I was basically um, uh, trying to figure out after school what I um, uh, really liked to do. And at that point, um, I was also uh, very um, interested in the um, very fundamental questions at some point uh, about uh, what actually uh, makes uh, makes up the basic structure of nature at some point. So I was interested in the uh, general subjects of uh, physics, um, in, in, uh, uh, definitely. But um, I also had um, always uh, in the back of my head some projects. So I wanted to make something um, that uh, has a certain function and um, has, has a purpose and can uh, do that purpose on extended periods of time, probably. And that led me to the um, question, where can I actually learn to um, get better at that? Um, uh, mm -hmm. Those special skills that you actually need. So that led me to the, um, uh, to the pursuit of an um, um, engineering um, uh, bachelor's now and um, uh, also led me to the uh, conclusion that this would be a great opportunity to have some practical um, uh, things um, uh, done here for the um, uh, Astra Group and recovery um, as the uh, best entry option for my side. Okay, well it's quite a jump to go from uh, small DIY projects to designing the recovery system for a 100 kilometer uh, rocket vehicle. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Definitely. First of all, tell us a little bit about what the recovery system is supposed to do yeah. and why, maybe tell us about why recovery is so difficult mm -hmm. for these types of rockets. We have to pay close attention to um, uh, the speed that we want to um, uh, believe of and uh, get get um, uh, get down to um, proper speeds where can actually um, safely touch down. So that's our main main goal to um, uh, get um, uh, uh, from 100 kilometers um, uh, where we'll accelerate quite a bit due to um, uh, gravity first. We will basically free fall um, at first and afterwards um, when we go through the atmosphere from 100 kilometers, we then um, have um, uh, the lower parts uh, which has quite a bit more density than the, um, the upper parts um, of the atmosphere, we then have quite a bit of drag that slows us down. And that drag um, uh, increases ever more um, as we go uh, further down and we, re we reach a um, terminal um, uh, velocity, which is um, uh, around about um, uh, 130 uh, meters per second um, um, at um, three kilometer of height. And that uh, altitude and that speed is uh, quite good for our um, first parachute to be actually deployed. Um, first parachute? The so first parachute. So we have multiple parachutes. So we have multiple parachutes, yes. And um, after that, the first parachute, um, because that first parachute um, can, uh, um, uh, is, is quite, quite small. Um, will be uh, only only be able to um, uh, actually slow the vehicle down to around about um, uh, 30 meters per second. But with 30 meters per second, and um, that we are um, uh, now at the very um, uh, coming coming near 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 the ground, we all still have to have to um, uh, get uh, down to uh, more manageable speeds. And at that part, um, uh, we then uh, said we have to go with the. Um, two-stage um, parachute um, uh, uh, version um, because we cannot do that in one parachute. We need um, uh, an additional 
um, main parachute um, afterwards and that will be quite a bit more uh, bigger and it has um, a diameter of um, to 4 um, uh, meters, uh, meters I think and um, then we um, uh, reach uh, the um, target um, uh, drop uh, touchdown at um, uh, speed of around about uh, 5 meters per second. Just to put it in perspective, uh, we're coming at 130 meters per second yes. as we're falling. Uh, if we were to hit the ground at that speed, that's like basically a plane crashing around. Like, full of the pressure. Yeah. 30 meters per second, more. maybe it's like a high speed collision with your car. But then 5 meters per second is acceptable. Yeah. Uh, also, depending where we actually want to touch down, um, because uh, that's also a concern for that because um, uh, either we uh, touch down on, on, on um, uh, water, for example, like um, uh, the, the normal space capsules um, um, uh, generally tend to do, um, because they don't have to worry about um, maybe hitting popular areas or something like that. And that's always a major concern probably for the, for the um, orbit space missions. But for our, um, uh, in our example, it's also um, uh, up for debate where we actually want to um, uh, want to land, either in very unpopulated areas um, uh, um, over the over the land, um, or um, also uh, on the on the seas. So um, uh, if we actually have a water landing, um, then we um, uh, also expect some other um, uh, important uh, steps that need to be taken in order to uh, re um, uh, uh, get our um, capsule and um, safety back. I guess you have to make sure that the capsule can float. That uh, would be uh, would be would be awesome uh, because we don't want uh, the fish to have the data that we wanted to <laughs> want to take. Yeah. Well, yeah, one thing I'm wondering is why can't we just have the big parachute unfurl at the start mm -hmm. and just have one parachute system? That would be simpler. Yes. Uh, why not? And, and 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 simpler solutions are always the more and um, uh, the preferred ones in uh, uh, engineering, obviously. Uh, the very simple solution of a one parachute um, uh, system is just not um, uh, feasible at that point um, where we um, have to deploy it um, um, a decent um, altitude um, uh, at a decent altitude to be able to um, safely um, um, say we have a certain um, margin of error for the um, deployment to happen, uh, for example, and that three kilometers means we would only have um, 26 seconds till the impact, basically, um, without any parachute deployment. So um, uh, we need to really uh, be, be aware that at that point we only have um, uh, such a margin of error and um, uh, go, uh, going even lower down and with the altitude um, of our first parachute being deployed would mean um, uh, to basically be very, very short on time. So if you have a wall that, uh, for example, you are trying to um, uh, break um, uh, and, and you're sitting in a car and you're trying to um, uh, uh, stop right at that wall, you are not going to uh, drive with um, uh, um, uh, 100 kilometers per hour um, to, uh, just in front of that wall and will break for the last um, a few seconds, few meters that you are actually trying to um, uh, uh, because because that would be uh, efficient, that would be very very time efficient to do that, but nobody would risk it. Okay. So the better option and our option also was to have two times um, different magnitudes of braking, for example. Um, uh, we then uh, at first um, have a um, have, have um, uh, put our, the feet on our brakes um, uh, quite a bit, and after um, after after we have slowed down to a more manageable speed. We then pull the full brakes and um, uh, go with the main parachute. Okay, that makes sense. Sounds a lot safer to spread out the, the braking force across a, a bigger time domain. Yes. Can you give us a little bit of an idea of how we're going to make sure that the parachute comes out at the right time? Like, mm -hmm. is there a special system that is uh, working to control when the parachute gets released? And uh, tell us a bit about how that system works. Um, my job is um, to um, uh, develop the system that can safely deploy the um, drogue parachute and um, then cut away the drogue parachute um, uh, and ex um, um, then deploy the main parachute um, with the um, um, uh, um, safely afterwards 
and um, uh, then uh, we we are we are aware that that uh, main deployment also um, is actuated by the trigger signal of the main deployment. So we have two major signals that um, uh, go into the deployment, and um, the fun stuff was um, uh, to then develop a system that can um, uh, uh, that has a high probability of uh, the uh, the best possible probability of um, ejecting the parachute when we want. That is uh, quite, quite, quite interesting on itself. So if you if you don't mind, I will just extend a little bit. Um, to, uh, no, please. Yeah, um, tell us how you're going to cut away this, this parachute. Yes. At first, are at there, first, are, at first, there, first are, are there little scissors on board that snip the line, or how does this work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at first, at first we have to dra uh, at first we have to um, um, uh, really um, get the drogue uh, deployed. At first, we just have a box. Um, that, 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 that box is uh, called our parachute um, uh, containment and deployment um, uh, system and at first it has uh, the objective of containing everything and um, keeping it safe um, because the outside factor is um, uh, yeah, it's, it has been to space it has been to space and now it's coming back to, uh, to, to earth so this is quite a hard uh, hard time that they, uh, that it had but uh, nevertheless um, uh, that box, um, then contains on the top layer uh, the drop parachute, and that drop parachute um, uh, should be deployed at the um, at the uh, proper um, uh, deployment signal. So in order to do that, we um, had to uh, get a um, develop a system that is able to launch um, that um, small drop parachute and the lines. So we just um, thought of um, uh, using um, springs. Um, um, and had some other opportunities, uh, 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 some, some other possibilities in our head, but we um, now are going for the spring um, loaded mechanism that um, uh, on, uh, uh, on the trigger signal uh, servo will just um, uh, release a uh, line and um, that will um, uh, lead to a um, small box that will be pushed out by springs and by four springs that are symmetrically aligned. Um, and uh, um, uh, that um, uh, uh, drop box will um, uh, include the drop and the lines. And afterwards, we just have that um, uh, uh, lovely um, uh, drop shoot and the nose cone um, uh, floating around um, uh, and flying and re uh, reducing the speed quite a bit for those um, uh, um, for, for 20 seconds or something like that. We don't want to spend uh, so much time in that phase. And um, at that part, uh, uh, we then need to um, have a proper way to sever the connection and separate them and uh, cut the drug away. And we will do that um, uh, by probably by using a small system that uh, uses some pyrotechnics um, to, to just separate um, some carabiners from, from one another. But uh, uh, still, uh, we have a small line um, that is coming from the drug and uh, going to the, to the main parachute. Um, uh, bag, um, which sits um, underneath the, um, the, 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 the drop box that I've uh, um, uh, mentioned before. And uh, that line will then lead to, uh, to the um, uh, pulling out of main by the force that uh, the drop par parachute is um, still um, uh, producing upwards. So the recovery, the recovery strategy makes sense with, uh, with your initial drop deployments and then you have a special system that will Cut the drone, and then that will pull out the main, the main yes. parachute. Okay. Uh, so, are you are you guys planning to recover like the entire rocket, or what's the plan? Having the separation occur of different parts of the rocket basically um, has uh, opens the ability to just con uh, to just focus on a certain part of the rocket that you then need in order to um, to to probably do its function, and that is the nose cone for our part. We have um, a separable nose cone from the booster stage, and um, uh, those will separate at um, roughly apogee um, of uh, our targeted 100 kilometers, above 100 kilometers. And at that point, we just have that um, smaller um, uh, drop, not for the, that smaller uh, that smaller nose cone, um, uh, and uh, we then need to find a way to. Um, get the um, uh, nose cone, which just includes the um, uh, the avionics computers and uh, the data uh, that is logged, and um, uh, just some structure in the outer shell, um, uh, and obviously also the parachute and deployment system. 
um, uh, we just need uh, a way to get that safely down because um, that is only um, r roughly seven uh, kilograms um, uh, and uh, everything else is quite a bit more heavier and we um, at that point don't need um, uh, um, the booster stage in order to verify that we actually um, have been uh, uh, to, to the altitude. Uh, so there's no plans to put the, the booster into a museum say oh here's here's our rocket. <laughs> it would be nice, it would be definitely nice. You have some, at some point you have some emotional attachment obviously to every part um, uh, you develop and so uh, um, having, uh, having it uh, be able to come so safely down would be um, a, pr um, a secondary mission goal. Thanks for thanks for introducing us to the to the recovery system. I think we've all learned a lot about uh, how it's kind of working and also why it's really important to uh, recover a vehicle. Our main objective is uh, to get uh, uh, the system that we have properly um, uh, developed and uh, tested now, because we also want to um, keep our schedule and uh, try to launch um, uh, uh, next year or something like that. That's coming up really quick, so be sure to follow the channel in order to stay in tune with all the updates on our journey to the carbon line. And again, thank you Arvind for stopping by and telling us about your system. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.